Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CTE Counselor Academy Examples of Effective CTE Networks. Um, just a couple housekeeping items as we get started. Good morning. My name is Amy Julian, and I am the director for the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. The CTE Counselor Academy is brought to you by the Illinois State Board of Education and the Illinois Community College Board. All of you as attendees are in listen only mode. As you are moving through the webinar and moving through the um, questions of the day, please feel free to raise your hand if you would like us to unmute you or post any questions in the question pane and we will be stopping periodically to address those questions. Um, with that, I want to kind of just get started. So a little bit about our center, the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support creates, supports, and delivers professional development for career, technical, and adult education professionals across Illinois. Um, some of our fun things that you possibly have seen are the advisory committee guidebook that we've put together. Um, we've worked in partnership with both the State Board and the Community College Board in supporting um, the NTO Summit and Perkins 5 implementation. We, we try to be as many places as we can. Um, so welcome to the webinar. Today we are excited to be featuring two area, um, two different areas around effective presentation, effective networking for current tech ed. Um, Tom Frazier is the director for the Bloomington Area Career Center, and Laura Sullivan is the director for the Eastern Illinois Education for Employment System 340. So welcome to both of you. And now we're going to get into um, some presentations on exploring CTE networks. So with that, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Laura. Thank you. And by some magic wizardry, we should be able to see her screen pretty quickly. Laura, are you able to accept the present the presenter? I do not see anything popping up at me. And it tells me I cannot take control. Okay. Bear with us for oh, here we go. Sorry, I had to verify that you were going to be. Now, did that work? Yes. Great, perfect. You can tell me when to go. You're, you're good to go. We can see your screen. Okay, fantastic. Hello, everybody. I am Laura Sullivan, the director of the Eastern Illinois Education for Employment System, and I am going to talk a little bit about our CTE networks. Our office is one of 56 statewide EFE systems, and we are overseen by the Illinois State Board of Education. Um, our office is like a career center, like Mr. Fraser's uh, career center. However, we do not have a center or a building, but our classes are actually housed in local businesses. And our funding is the same as a career center with state and federal sources. And, um, and our largest program is a health occupations program, and it's actually hosted in a local hospital. So our students, instead of going to a career center, they actually go to the hospital and attend our high school-based program. Um, our office serves 25 school districts over an eight-county region in East Central Illinois. Many, many years ago, our office recognized a need for a support system for guidance counselors. In our large rural area, these unique individuals are often the only one in their building or they are the only one in the entire district. And they too have a need for personalized professional development and a network of like-minded career professionals. Our network includes guidance counselors from K-12 districts, um, middle school guidance counselors, as well as high school guidance counselors. 
and who may live or work in our region. We encourage them to bring any of their pre-service students um, as we want to encourage these new young professionals to apply for any openings within our region. Our group meets on a regular basis. We meet four times a year. So the counselors get to know each other and they get to build relationships and have a network of professionals who they can seek the help and guidance of. So with our agendas, I figured that's probably what everybody wants to know about. Um, they are planned to meet any day-to-day -day needs of guidance counselors in our district. While our focus for our office is on career and technical education, we see the importance of supporting our region students in any way that we can. So we host a variety of speakers from all disciplines and allow them to speak on their areas of expertise. You can see some of the topics listed in the first bullet. And one of the things that I forgot to list in the first bullet is we also invite some of our CTE teachers from our school districts to present on their programs and to explain the um, the relationships they have within their community. Um, and our presenters are from local organizations or statewide organizations, and they're often provided to us through various recommendations. Um, some of these organizations could be um, our local Department of Human Services office. They could be um, our, we've got Essential East Alcoholism, um, organization, um, SACUS, they're um, a sexual assault counseling and information service. We've had um, presenters come and talk about um, working with students who um, do self-harm. Um, and so we really allowed the professionals to talk to our guidance counselors about the topics they know. Um, we do invite our community college to provide updates at every meeting. The admissions representatives come and they talk about campus visit days. They talk about admission deadlines, scholarships, and other activities that students might be interested in at the college. Um, our dual credit director at Lakelands also comes and she talks about new classes, dual credit opportunities, um, some of her deadlines for dual credit rosters and so forth. Um, as well as special events on campus. Um, of course, since we are hosting these meetings, we also talk about some of our um, events that our office provides to our guidance counselors, teachers, educators, um, and our students. Um, and some of those events are listed on this slide. At our last meeting every year, we like to kind of do a mini celebration. So we try to do something fun. Um, we have hosted meetings at local nature centers. We are at our, um, our state park. Um, and we sometimes do um, business visits where we might take our guidance counselors to a local manufacturer or local tourist attractions like the Great Pumpkin Patch in Arthur um, so that they can get a behind the scenes view of that business or industry um, and how it may they need employees how it may affect the uh, the region with you know with tourism um, sales um, and so forth um, We have a few guidance counselors that help us to set our agendas. They provide us with topics that they want more information on. Um, we get together with them in the summer and, and they help provide us with some topics that we can utilize throughout the year. Um, we may have a veteran guidance counselor, one who's been maybe in the region for a while. We try to have new guidance counselors um, as well because everybody has different needs. Um, statewide organizations are also a great place to collect topics for our agendas um, as we see what are some of the topics that um, are hot topics in the state um, we can bring in presenters that can help clarify some of that and how it might affect us locally um, we also use sort of a listserv so that at any time during the year if a guidance counselor has questions um, about something and they just want to get some feedback um, maybe on how many classes CTE classes are being offered at different schools or how they're planning their master schedule for the year 
um, we'll send that, those questions out to our guidance counselor list, um, all of our high school and middle school counselors, and they'll provide feedback. Sometimes those topics bring up new topics, um, and we will, and if there's still a lot of questions, we'll put those on an agenda for the next meeting. Um, some of the obstacles that we come up against with our guidance counselor meetings, um, we always try to have a full day session with our guidance counselors. And when you're the only guidance counselor in your building or in the district, it's hard to leave for an entire day. Um, In-service days are different at each school district. Fridays don't always work. We have our meetings on Fridays. Um, sometimes there's state assessments um, that conflict, and our guidance counselors are the ones that are typically in charge of um, providing those assessments to students. Um, some of our guidance counselors, again, we're small, we have a lot of small rural schools, so some of our guidance counselors actually teach classes. Um, Strategies for Success is a dual credit class um, through Lakeland College, and many of our guidance counselors teach that, and some of them also teach psychology. Right now, we hold many of our meetings at our community college's workforce development center. They have a very nice computer lab that we utilize. They do not charge us for the space, and we are very grateful for them. Um, however, they are working on building a new center. Um, I think that's in the plan over the next couple years, and we do not know how that will change our partnership. I don't know what space they will have or if we'll still have access to a computer lab. Um, and one thing, um, just like this session, we're able to talk to other professionals in the field virtually, and we do not have that expertise or that equipment to provide virtual meetings or any kinds of um, recording so that individuals can follow up later. Um, we do meet four times a year um, and we provide, I believe, six hours of professional development hours needed for um, all of our guidance counselors to um, for their licensure with ISBE. Um, and we are working on some ideas to collaborate more with Eastern Illinois University. They're just 10 miles away from our home office in Mattoon, um, and they offer a master's in school counseling program. Um, so we are looking at trying to build a, a, a relationship with them um, so that they can get some real-world experience for their, their teachers and, and implement some of that into their curriculum. Um, we're also looking at maybe trying to create a new business ed education community advisory group that might work more directly with guidance counselors and their needs. And then here is my contact information if anybody would have questions later. Um, I did, um, I posted our website here on this page and I actually posted a link under the student services button on our homepage um, that includes the agendas for our first three meetings, if anybody wanted to see what they look like. Excellent, thank you so much, Laura. I am going to take back the presenter view here. So you all should be able to see my screen now. Let's get us caught up. Um, and now we're going to kind of shift gears and I'm gonna to ask Tom some of those same questions that Laura has addressed. So Tom, to start off with, could you speak to how your partnership was created and who was in your CTE network? Uh, th thank you, Amy, I appreciate it. Um, with uh, at, let me just give a little bit of background real quickly first. Bloomington Area Career Center, we serve students from 16 or 17 high schools annually. Um, some kids are coming from as far as 40 minutes away. Others are coming from uh, across the hallway because we uh, rent space in, <coughs> excuse me, several different buildings or satellite sites. So we have the, a combination of programs at the Career Center. In addition, I'm an EFE director like Laura is. So we do some similar things that she does um, 
probably not to at the robust level she um, provides some of uh, her professional development though. At the Career Center, partnerships, that, a couple of key partnerships we have are with our local community college, Heartland Community College, as well as um, our business community. Uh, partnership with the community college was created, you know, before I was in my position, but it was very, um, how could I phrase it? It was, it was not to the degree that uh, we are partnering now. We had some articulated credit programs um, available for high school students uh, through the Career Center. They were not used for the most part. Um, very, 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 very few kids were using these. Um, so the effectiveness was not there. Over time, we continued to have conversations and I, can, I continue to request um, dual credit with the community college. With that, it came and went. Um, and there were some challenges um, with it because of different presidents at the college, uh, different rules. And also, I had to learn more about ICCB and what their expectations were for um, dual credit, as well as um, what the college needed to follow through the community college board. It's evolved into a very robust dual credit program. It is not just with BACC classes, but there are a lot of dual credit offerings throughout the region. Heartland has uh, is an excellent partner for the high schools in the region. Um, last year at the Career Center, um, over $300,000 worth of dual credit was earned, uh, which talks to you about the um, dramatic um, improvement that we've had with that. Uh, they don't charge us for dual credit. Um, some of it is transferable. A lot of it is not. It is CTE credit. And that was part of my learning curve that I had to learn. And I work to try to make sure our families are aware of what type of dual credit and what are those opportunities and such. But some of our programs offer uh, um, three credits of dual credit. Others offer as much as 19 hours per uh, program uh, and such. Excellent. So our next question for you is what barriers, and you spoke a little bit to this, have you encountered as you've worked through your partnership and how did you overcome those barriers? Well, some of the barriers existed um, just through knowledge and that includes my knowledge of what we want, but also it really worked to develop a, the collaborative relationship was key to overcoming the barriers. They listened to me, I listened to them, I learned about their needs, I learned about ICCB rules, that was very important, and I think they listened very well to me too, where we have a very good partnership. We meet with the community college a couple times a year, um, and in that we discuss what's working well, what's not working as well, and they are very open to how we can change, how they can change things, as well as how we can change things. And that's a huge benefit to have that type of partnership. Um, it is not a, this is how we're going to do it, get in line, okay, and do it. It is, you know, what that, we get questioned on how this will affect us as well as, you know, but we have to learn to adjust at the high school side too. Some of our partnerships I want to mention also are with uh, local business industry, um, and that has evolved quite a bit too. Uh, I think part of the evolution of that has been that's been beneficial with our business partners and community partners, it has been their realization and their need for more skilled, uh, for a more skilled workforce. I used to knock on doors of businesses. I used to get, who are you again? And uh, no, we don't wanna work with high school kids. Now they're coming to me. They are looking for more and more kids that are coming out of our program, uh, young adults that are coming out of our program and such. Um, we still have barriers with business industry. Some of it is if the kids aren't 18 years old, they don't want to work with us. Um, depends on the type of business it is. We also get into, uh, we compete for business time and attention with um, community college, with ISU students and interns and different uh, people that are out there as well as many of our local high schools. And so what's been important is we stress the partnership and how these opportunities can also help the business industry. And that's been growing more and more. 
Um, a lot of times the business will say, yes, we're interested, and then it's tough for us to get that done. From the high school perspective with high school counselors, whether you're working internships, job shadowing, presentations, what I think is key is you got to be persistent with the business industry, okay? If you're not persistent, um, they're going to continue to you're an extra for them. And I've come to realize, you know, we're those other guys and we're a lot of extra, but I got to stay persistent to, in order to have uh, the benefits for our students of these types of opportunities. Excellent. Thank you. Our next question for you is, what processes are you using to build a quality career and technical education program of study? And what mechanisms do you use to engage with your network? What's um, the processes we use is um, I highly encourage our teachers. I highly encourage the staff here to get out and uh, talk with the business industry folks. And that's a huge piece, I think, so that um, my teachers are trying to ensure that what we're teaching them is for today's tomorrow's job, not yesterday's job. Um, I would hate to see my auto instructor teaching much on clutch systems in cars. Um, he is working much more into the electric vehicle work as well as the hybrid vehicle stuff. And that's because he has talked to business industry and he sought out professional development related to that. Um, I'm willing to send out uh, the teachers to 4PD because of our ever-changing uh, classes and coursework and programs and such. We also got to work it and it's important for us to communicate with our par high school partners too. That includes guidance counselors, that includes principals, assistant principals, and superintendents. Um, and with those communications, uh, we strive to make sure everyone's aware of uh, programming that we offer, what's um, included in that programming, and um, how we're working to make sure that kids are getting exposed to the business industry, um, how we're helping the students network with the business world, as well as the dual credit opportunities. Mechanisms include meetings, mechanisms include uh, updates via email, phone calls, and uh, advisory groups. What's been um, good with the advisory groups, um, some of them are more formal than others, I'll be honest. Um, the more formal ones, we partner with a community college. And what's beneficial about that is it brings my teachers in contact with the community college teachers. In addition, it, it brings um, the business people to the table at one time and only one time. It's tough enough to get them there at times. Um, so having them there for one meeting uh, can be beneficial. We're on some of the community college advisory groups, um, specifically in the health sciences, where myself and or my teachers are attending their meetings providing updates from the high school viewpoint, but we're also able to hear what business industry is needing um, in those health science areas and get us an opportunity to talk to the hospitals and medical professionals that are at their advisory group. So again, that partnership with the community college has been huge. Their willingness to include us has been huge, but I also try to push, my, push the teachers out to uh, interact with business professionals to make sure we're meeting the needs and such. Fantastic. Sounds like you have a lot going on. We, no, we've got a few things going on. A few things going on. You're very yeah. modest. Um, last kind of paired question there is, how do counselors fit into your CTE network? And what advice would you give to counselors who want to engage with their local CTE network? Reach out to different people. Um, we don't, I wish we did more with the counselors. Counselors, you guys have a very, very difficult job because there are so many different things on your plate. I got some uh, counselors in our region that probably have three to 400 kids on their caseload. And then I have some small schools that maybe have 200 kids, but it, that includes some junior high students. And in addition, I know you guys have standardized testing sometimes um, as part of your duties, as well as the um, enormous amount of social emotional issues that are coming to high school uh, student that high school students are dealing with and that you guys are trying to help them deal with on a, a regular basis. And all of that goes, you know, hand in hand. 
I encourage you to continue to try to carve out time to learn about curriculum, learn about opportunities related to CTE, programs of study, um, and help, ooh, phone call, and help um, do the best you can with, um, I'm sorry, that phone call threw me for a loop. Uh, do the best with, that you can with um, who you're working with and with the programs and with the college and such. Excellent, thank you. Laura, did you have anything that you wanted to add to what advice you would give to counselors who want to engage with their local CTE networks? Um, I would agree with Tom in that they just need to reach out. Um, oftentimes our guidance counselors are the point of contact for about everything. Um, so anytime we have curriculum discussions, we try to include our counselors um, because they are kind of the gateway to helping students choose the correct career path as well as selecting the right courses to take um, at their high schools. Um, so it's very important that they have a, a large knowledge base of what's going on in their communities um, as well as in the region and with their local community colleges. Excellent. So any closing comments from either of you? I just appreciate this opportunity. Um, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm more than happy to try to help in any way, shape, or form. Um, use your EFE directors, use your um, CTE teachers to try to provide kids opportunities. I think that's always important in working with high school students and such. Amy, if you could share my contact information, that would be fine. Okay, great. I will share that with this presentation um, and the evaluation. Laura, any closing comments? Um, I agree with Tom. If anybody has questions, um, while we are very similar to what Tom does, we are still very different. Um, and our focus is, is a little different because we just don't have the, the center. Um, but we still provide as many services as we can to our, our educators in our region. Excellent. So thank you both for coming on and speaking with us today. I those of you who know me know I cannot have a presentation without talking about the special pops. So just a reminder, we have additional special pops this now under Perkins 5, and there is going to be some great resources coming out on how to um, support those special populations. So I do want to open the floor now um, to questions. Does anyone have questions? There were a couple little questions here and there, but both of you actually addressed those as you spoke. So while we're waiting on um, individuals to type some questions in the question pane, I want to um, let everyone know that the CTE Counselor Academy capstone is going to be held on May 13th. Um, we had some, actually a lot of input from the field. We sent out a survey saying, hey, March 6th, how's that working out for everybody? And everyone said it's not a great date. So we have re um, scheduled that and we're going to be meeting on May 13th. We'll be meeting at the Crown Plaza in Springfield and registration is available. I will also send that out to everyone who registered and attended today. Um, so you have that information and you can register to attend on May 13th and hopefully that will be a better day. The capstone is really a culmination of all of this that we've been talking about over the last month and a half. So we're going to look at not only Perkins 5, what are the special pops, your CTE network, your role in the comprehensive local needs assessment, but a big part of that day is going to be hearing from business how they see counselors fitting into the CTE network and into their network. And so we have invited business representatives from each of the career pathway areas to speak to um, how counselors really can benefit them and what counselors role will be. So it's going to be a fantastic day and I hope you're all able to attend. Um, Again, I want to thank you all for your time. I want to thank both Laura and Tom for taking their time today to present for us. They had a lot of great um, ideas and things that they shared about how they have built their CTE counts, their CTE network, let alone um, infusing with their counselors. So with that, I do not see any questions in our question pane. So thank you all so very much and have a great day. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Thank you. All good? Yep. Have a good afternoon.